All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here. I see a few new faces. Most of you guys have been here before, but I'll just say, uh, do the, go through the uh, housekeeping stuff here real quick. Uh, the bathroom is through the screen and porch door there, and that's the second door on the left. Unless you have mobility issues, and there is uh, that little white building in the driveway that has a ramp, and you can just you can use that ramp and go uh, go right into the bathroom. It's it's on. So you walk in, take a right, and uh, the bathroom's in there. Um, let's see. Down there, there is a little tub that says donations. Um, I'm gonna fix this real quick. Sorry, I hear something. All right, there we go. Um, there's a little tub down there that says donations. If you haven't made a donation yet, uh, either online or here in person, please do. That's uh, how Evan gets paid, and I like when Evan gets paid. Uh, he, ke he keeps coming back because I think people uh, are generous. So, um, Down there as well, there is a, a list of upcoming concerts. Our next concert is uh, this Friday. That's going to bug me. Hold on. I got to. There we go. Uh, our next concert is Friday. Keith Ray is coming. And then uh, actually Logan Meyer, who lives like, uh, I don't know, four houses down, he's going to he's gonna come out and do his first concert ever So, uh, and open that show up. So I'm really excited for him. Uh, let's see. And then Saturday we'll be in Bishop Hill, <coughs> Morgan Miles and Susie Bogus. And then Sunday we'll be in Galva with Rachel Brooke and Sydney Adams. And that's the last, yeah, that's the last Levitt concert of this season. So Saturday and Sunday are totally free. Just come out, bring your lawn chairs. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Uh, and then things are, things stay busy for a while after that. Then the, a week from today, Scary Vore, an eight-piece group from uh, Scotland. They'll be at Wiley Park in Galva. Uh, you'd think I'd have all of these memorized. So then on that Friday, uh, I think it's August 11th, Cup of Joe. It's their first U.S. tour. Uh, they're from uh, they're from Ireland. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Oh, yeah. I do, actually, yeah. <laughs> on August 12th. <laughs> you don't have to come to that one. It's fine. <laughs> um, but if you do want to come, yeah. it's it's uh, Actually, Trevor Sensor, he's going to open that show up for us. So some of you guys have probably seen Trevor before. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's a Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> and Dino Ride. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop on the the schedule because you can just grab a, a paper copy down there, and right next to it is a sheet. Uh, you can put your email on if you want me to send you emails. I send usually about one email a week out. Uh, and then I think I should also mention there's still probably a bunch of food under that tent over there. So if you haven't gotten anything to eat. Please do that. Uh, trash and recycling are over there. And we do have a fire. I probably will make some s'mores here at some point. Am I forgetting anything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And and several others are here in the in the lawn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be at the park. Yeah, that'll be at the park. Seven o'clock it starts. Yeah, so that's tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, it's a busy time. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you for coming. I really do appreciate it. I know Evan does as well. Uh, he uh, he has some stuff here that he's brought with him for sale. So, uh, and he has some new stuff. Actually, some shirts that just came in. So you can be the first people to own those. They haven't even gone out to people yet. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. So, I really appreciate it, Evan. Thanks for being here. Um, Evan Bartles. <laughs> that is a top ten intro, John. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> you know, we were talking when I pulled up, and the first time I ever played here, it was, it's been six years already. That means I've known you longer than I've known my son, and that's got to count for something. It's got to count for something. You know, the truth is, though, is I, you know, I really I keep coming back six years after the first one for Carlos Tomatoes, so that's, that's what's going to bring me back over and over again.
Her hair smelled the same Lying there in bed Way that it did years ago When I hadn't said I loved her yet My flannel shirt she wears at night Smells vaguely of the cigarettes We'd smoke out on the front porch Some nights before I lay my head Oh, oh, I ain't ever letting go No siren song can pull me away from my love This house is built on stone These roots go down and bed I can tie me close to my love Sometimes I tell her The things that I reckon And she laughs when I say things like Says this small town Squeezes my hand And smiles when she tells me I sound just like my old man Some night she reads to me A verse from me coming The one about a woman She's my favorite Mine from that poem And I'm her favorite cowboy song oh, I ain't ever letting go No siren song can pull me away From my can hear it on the roof We fell asleep to the sound You made love to me last night Am I the same man laying here now Wondering 
I always love coming to Illinois, especially Cambridge, because it reminds me so much of where I grew up. And you know, fun fact, I grew up in Nebraska in a town that was so small we would have referred to going to Cambridge as going to town. <laughs> you know, mom would have put makeup on, that's for sure. But that's, I grew up in Nebraska and uh, in a small town called Tobias that my family got there before the town was there, as a matter of fact, in 1885 and started a homestead. And that's where we come from. But before they got that, when they got off the boat in Germany, they spent, you know, the first couple years in America in this part of Illinois and then moved to Nebraska. And so I always like coming over here. I got a little, uh, we live outside of Nashville now. And for the past two years, I've been building a cabin out back in our woods um, just to write songs in and, you know, hide away all the guitars and stuff like that. And in there I got this old wood box that's made out of old, um, must have been probably old floorboards or something. And it's about 
three and a half foot long, three and a half foot tall. It's got rope handles, and it was the box that my great great grandpa built to fit all their stuff in and bring it across on the boat. We it still says Friedrich Bartels on it, and where the cities they came from, and I don't know. It's one of my most prized possessions, and I look at that. We call it the immigrant box. And so when I'm driving up here, looking at all the fields and everything, I just sometimes I wonder if these towns or this land or these farms, I wonder if somebody in my family has seen it before. Because it's funny, the older I get, the more I think about stuff like that. And I always thought about it, even when I was a kid. But I also wanted to get out of those small towns. And then you do, and you figure out that no matter where you go, whatever you think it's like, you're right. Like, you ever been to Toledo, Ohio? Imagine it for a second. Just imagine it, if you've been there or not. You're right, that's what it's like. That's the same everywhere. You know, this is just people pretty much just like you or just like me. And man, when you learn that lesson, by the time you make it home, if you come from a small town like this or like that, I don't know, it seems so much richer, so much deeper, but also so much smaller. I remember I was in Norman, Oklahoma, oh, probably about five, six years ago now. Must have been six, about that first time that I came through on this tour, later that fall. My mom called, she said, you should come back home if you can, because your grandpa's not, um, doing so good anymore and I just missed him I drove through the night and I just missed him but when I got back to my hometown for the first time in about two years you know those old pastures and prairies that were the savannas of Africa where we were on safari and the jungles of Vietnam they were just abandoned railroad tracks and they were some back 40 that got lost in a divorce once upon a time. And I wished for a second that I could go back just for a day and see it again when that small town was the whole world. And so now we raise our kids. There's a real small town about 30 minutes west of Nashville. We're surrounded by woods and rivers. And my son, he says, Dad, can we go down to the creek? And every time, even if I got something else to do, I say, yeah, we can, because I know he's five, and he's got very few years left where that crick is the whole world. So I go every time, because it takes me back, too. And that's what this song is about in so many things. dollar bill, I figured if the devil ain't killed me yet, good Lord loves me still. With my hands on the wheel of that 99 Trans Am, I dropped the clutch in second gear to prove I was a man. I Outside of Western In my buddy's old sedan We'd get high And look at highways And talk like older men We were sad And we were angry But mostly we were young And I failed I think to recognize Myself for what I was In my time Well, Pa just sold the house and my mama moved to town. Half the places I remember look to me to be falling down. I got an old friend on the bottle, I got another snorting pills. But the rest of them are doing well out working in the fields. I, I, 
All the old familiar stories are coming to an end Like my grandpa sitting in his chair and talking shit with him But the day will come I realize where it all starts again A couple new kids hearing old tall tales that start with way back when In my time And God, if you can hear me I ain't always done you right If you're in the business of forgiving Well then I reckon I'll take mine And if you got a second left And you feel so inclined Tell my brothers in the darkness I'll be coming around In my time In my time I had a bad idea Hundred dollar bill I figured if the devil ain't killed me yet The good Lord loves me still Yeah, it's funny. When I was a boy, I wanted to do a... There was this uh, all these movies with Elvis and stuff being a rock star, and I thought that's what I would want to do, is, uh, you know, be a rock star, be a musician, play the guitar and dance around and do the whole thing. And now, I mean, I'm only 30, and my back is so bad. If I started swinging these hips, that'd be the end of the night. And I figured out through trying to do that kind of party music and selling beer, I was like, I really don't have any interest in that, you know. I, my sister says when people ask her what kind of music her brother plays, she says uh, red wine music. And I'm like, that's a lot closer than bush light music, you know. And I've done both, but somewhere along the way I decided I don't wanna, I don't wanna play music to sell beer. And honestly, truth be told, it's not even being horribly interested in music I like uh, I like living and it took me a while to figure that out but I liked uh, my dad would always teach me life lessons stuff that you should know and probably most of you would think is obvious and for some reason I decided I was going to test a lot of those hypotheses and figure them out for myself and just all sorts of things going places, doing things. You know, I remember I was 19 years old when I met my wife, and I was with these guys in a band, and they said, listen, if you want to do music and tour and do the whole thing, they go, definitely don't get married and definitely don't have kids. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to listen to that because I like to do what I like to do. And, you know, me and John were talking about this tonight too, you know, the idea of making it. I was like, hell, I got a wife two kids and I'm still showing up to your house you know what I mean that's making it it's just living life and I got real interested in that and I think that's that's the reason why you keep hopping in the truck or the van and tuning the guitar and going out is because sometimes when you do this you meet somebody and you get a story and then that story turns into a song and if you're real lucky, the song's not half bad, and you start playing it out, and somebody goes, that's a pretty good song, man. And then you meet somebody else, and the process starts over. And this is one of those. I wrote this song about the first time I ever went to Nashville, and my show got canceled right before I played it. And so, long story short, as I decided the best course of action was to find a bar and shut her down, and I did. And it was me and one other guy in there. And it was back in the days you could still smoke in bars there. And so we were just sitting there smoking and drinking beers and drinking whiskey. And if you've ever done that before, you know. You start to just tell people. It's like having a good barber. You just start talking and you don't know why, but you can't stop. And before you know it, I had his life story and he had mine. And his was better, so he got the song. But this is that. Oh, 
On the east side of Nashville I sat and got stoned With a man who never told me his name He said the death of a good man Don't really matter If he ain't got no friends and no kin He said I blame it on the damn tobacco He said I blame it on this damn old booze And I blame it on the fella sitting up there in heaven For giving me the right to choose Said the cancer came back oh, about a month ago After two years of leaving me alone And my wife died back in December Since then I've been here on my own In 04 my boy died in Fallujah Just like I went and fought back in nine But I made it home And some bastard shot him And he died over there in the sand He said I reckon I'll die on a Tuesday And I'm hoping the sun's gonna shine And I can't take it with me So I drink it right here My whiskey, my beer, and my wine And he spoke like a Southern Baptist preacher Sang like a Pentecostal choir Said he always done right by his mama And ain't no man could call him a liar Some nights when his spirit got heavy He'd dream of that lost promised land It looked like back home in Virginia He said I'll never see them old hills again And I sit at the bar while he's talking Just like me and him was old friends The promise I'd always remember The life of a good man She spoke like a southern man This preacher, Lord, he sang like a Pentecostal choir. Said he always done right by his mama, and ain't no man could call him a liar. Some nights when his spirit got heavy, he dream of that lost promised land. Look like back home in Virginia He said I'll never see them old hills again And I'd sit at the bar while he's talking Just like me and him was old friends And promise I'd always remember The life of a good Only sad in Nashville I sat and I got stoned. <laughs> She used to watch him roll his cigarettes 
On the front porch wearing her Sunday best But they ain't been to church in 15 years If miracles still happen Well, they don't happen here She had to sell her mama's ring And that piano Cause he pissed away their mortgage on his booze Just a shell of the man she fell in love with She'd be damned if she let him drown her too She'd say in the morning I could hit Montana If I drive through all night I could get lost back in the mountains Find a space deep in the pines She's a mama to a son who didn't make it and she found him by himself in his room She can still see his face in the moonlight Eyes half open on the floor Lips a gentle shade of blue She'd blame it on herself for years after but there ain't a goddamn thing she could have done What's left when your soul is taken from you There was nothing in her heart But the woman she once was She'd say in the morning I could hit Montana If I drive through all night I could get lost back in the mountain Find a spot deep in the pines I need a place where I can wander Question the meaning of my life In the land they call Big Sky She'd say in the morning I could hit Montana Thank you. She had a mean drunk daddy like to push her around And he sold what he called poor man's cocaine But the police call it methamphetamine One night she sunk her knife in the small of his back Ain't no one gonna find where she buried him at 
She took a train up the river in Omaha And did some dirty damn things to buy a broke down car She'd say, I ain't getting younger I just want to feel good I ain't going to do what you want Cause you tell me I should I'm just going to sit right down Have a smoke Somebody buy me a beer Somebody tell me a joke Well, people do funny things to numb their pain And Lula drank liquor to forget her name She used to sleep it off by an old oak tree In the Pontiac she bought with her money from the street She'd say, I ain't getting younger I just want to feel good I ain't gonna do what you want Cause you tell me I should I'm just gonna sit right down Have a smoke Somebody buy me a beer Somebody tell me a joke Yeah Crying for a life that she never knew What could have been and how it was And what she ought to do She wiped a tear from her eyes And she shut her mouth And when her feet hit the river All the lights went out She'd say I ain't getting younger I just want to feel good I ain't gonna do what you want Cause you tell me I should I'm just gonna sit right down Have a smoke Somebody buy me a beer Somebody tell me a joke Somebody buy me a beer Somebody tell me a joke Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. I've been testing that one out the past couple months. I was uh, earlier this winter. I was sitting out in my cabin back before it had drywall and electricity, and my wife was calling it the shack because. I would sit out there and I had half of it sectioned off with plastic so that I could run space heaters and it would have less area to keep warm. And I would just go sit out there after the kids were in bed and work on writing songs. And one night I sat down and I was just messing with the guitar and played that song pretty much from start to end, which, you know, writing songs, that doesn't happen very often for me where it just falls out. We were dancing in the kitchen 
dying young Seems so much fun When in your mind Thanks, guys. God bless America. I hope. That's true What I'm reading online What I read on the news Looks like a war Dogs out for blood Who's right and who's wrong They can't get enough
every soul an illusion Then why are we here? What does it mean to be human? I will not bow my head I will not bend my knee To a false god's rage And fear of tyrant kings All of you cause we're human And we can all First tour that I ever went on, I played here at your house, John. Yep, my first real tour. Yeah, six years ago it was. And you know the thing about that tour is I had um, I had quit my day job to be a full-time singer-songwriter, and then right before I left on that tour, my wife found out that she was pregnant, but I had everything booked, and. Uh, a real moment where I could make a choice, you know, and that was a hard one to make, but really maybe it wasn't so hard, you know, it was, it was really more of a question of who do you want to be when people are talking about who you were, you know, and I didn't ever want to look at my son or my daughter and say, you know, you can do anything in this life. I didn't, because of you, <laughs> I didn't. But you can, surely. I didn't want to do that, so I went out. And for five of those nine months, I was living out of a van. And out of all those shows that I played, the only one that I'm still talking to one of the people from, I think it's probably you, John. Like, I swear, because most of those other places, that's true. You know, I did maybe a few house shows there that they either quit doing it or something changed. And a lot of them, you know, a lot of the places I was playing weren't even venues. You know, it was like a restaurant or a brewery that would have music and then you know, be closed eight months later, stuff like that. 
I can't think of one other place. Sincerely. Outside of, like, establishment venues, like Rockwood or Zoo Bar or something, you know? So I like coming here, man. Because it was one of those things is you meet people when you dare to do something. You meet people who do the same thing. And then even if you don't see each other for six months or a year, you know they're out there. And it keeps you going. And it makes you feel like you're not crazy. On the night set, you're sleeping in a Walmart and pissing in a milk jug. Because I've had a lot of those. Matter of fact, I wrote this song in a van on one of those nights. Trouble on the highway up ahead. Sirens turn the road into blues and red. Nose against the glass, I can see my breath. Say a little prayer, but I drive on. So I light a cigarette and roll the window down Ash it in my coffee, a slow exhale I turn the radio on, hear a song I love Cry about the woman it reminds me Everybody tells me I'm a good man Got a life worth living Family and friends back home But every night I fight that voice in my head Saying I'm a low-down son of a bitch as they come Well, if the liquor don't get you, then the lonely will. It's another late night, another cheap hotel. And it's another long drive to another small town. Load it and set it up, tear it down. Everybody tells me I'm a good man Got a life worth living Family and friends I know But every night I fight that voice in my head Saying I'm a low-down son of a bitch as they come If I'm gonna die, then let me die where the road goes, so will I Till I ride this highway home going on that tour and I played a bunch of places since then played a bunch of great great shows bunch of not great shows but um, also living in Nashville now for four years I do a lot of writing for other artists you know I'll go into different publishing companies and stuff and write with some of their singers and their recording artists and stuff and make songs for them and with them and one day I was in I got a friend named her name's Layla Tucker and she's one of the best singers that I've ever heard and she ought to be because I'm gonna brag a little she's Tanya Tucker's daughter and she's a she's
she's a good friend of mine and we got together back in March and she said I got, I'm stuck on this song would you want to come write it with me and I was like yeah I would it sounds like a great way to spend an afternoon we got together and it was just this beautiful kind of classic country song that I don't write a lot of that but I love listening to it and I grew up on it and I was so inspired after hanging out with her that night that when I got back to my house and put the kids to bed, I went out to the cabin, or the shack, like my wife was calling it, and I had a bottle of wine, and I sat there and I said, you know what, if I wrote a country song, like a real country western song, I wonder what that'd sound like. About halfway through that bottle of wine, I'll be damned if I didn't find out. And so this is my countryest country song. And I love it. I love it. I think I'm probably going to record this and put it out. Pedal steel on the works. And just, I mean, hell, I already drive a truck and wear cowboy hats. I just never do it on stage. I told my wife, I was like, I might go into doing like some George Strait stuff. And she was like, you ought to. So we'll see. We'll see. If this one doesn't get me booed out of here, then I'll maybe explore that. But this is a song about why I started writing music in the first place what brought me to here and it's called bars whiskey and women it ain't a long way to the bottom if you know how to get there I've seen it all A time or two And some people say It's a road to nowhere But I disagree Cause I know If it weren't for bars and whiskey and women I'd be at home with nothing to do It ain't good luck singing for you Now I've been to church And I read the Bible God, if you're there I'm talking I think God made a damn good disciple. I'll pray with the sinners. Hell, I'll drink with them too. Cause if it weren't for We'd all be home with nothing to do. Lord, it ain't good love. They got me in this position. Right in these songs. singing for you It ain't a long way to the bottom 
If you know how to get there Thank you. one of those times that with the humidity you got to make sure that guitar's tuned just right and I've learned over the years you want to hurry it up you don't want to stand here like a butthead tuning a guitar all night and you tell yourself I should really hurry up and get to the next song but what I've learned is if you don't take the time to tune it right once you hit just about the second verse all you're gonna hear is that F sharp that's just twanging a little bit out, and then you'll feel even worse. So, should have had a dehumidifier up here, John, then I'd stay in tune a little easier.
Will you cast my doubts away? Take my sins down to the grave. If there is hope, then let me see. There is life for those like me. Oh. Thank you very much. Last year I got to go on a couple tours that made a whole circle of the entire U.S. And earlier this year, I accomplished my goal of all of the 48 lower United States. I hit them all. So now, yeah, now I've been to all of them. How about that? Even got to go to Canada a couple months ago, play a show up there. Pretty nice, eh? You're not going to believe this either, but I'll tell it to you. It was me and it was my brother Logan who's back there. It was me and him our buddy Mike and we were driving up through Maine and the whole time Logan's going oh I want to see a moose god I want to see a moose I said you never seen a moose in Colorado or nothing he goes no never seen one in the wild he goes how cool would that be I was like that would be pretty cool keep in mind we're in Canada a day you know we're in and we're out and all interstates and so we cross the border at night and we was going to stay at this little hotel He's going, oh, shit, all I wanted to see was a moose, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> no sooner had he said that. I mean, keep in mind, the whole drive through Maine, which is a long drive, every time we pass a marsh or something, I see him looking out the window like this. <laughs> Check it. No moose. Finally, it's getting dark. He goes, we're not going to see a single moose. No sooner did he say that than he goes, oh, my God, a moose. And we ended up seeing two of them right on the side of the road. And it was the best. Canada, I would recommend it for moose seeing. And uh, I don't know. I wasn't really there long enough for much else. But, you know, I, was, I liked seeing the moose. I've seen a couple wild ones in the past. What I, what I loved more than seeing that was seeing my brother see his first moose. That was great. But it's funny because, you know, I remember I was playing that show, and this dude, we were in, where is it? Is it British? New Brunswick. And um, this guy come, and he's 
said, man, I drove three hours to come see you from up by uh, Newfoundland. I love your music, and I had to come see you when I saw you up here. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And I've run into a couple people like that who would come real far for shows. And I, I always, I appreciate that because I believe the hardest thing in life is to get somebody to go out to something. I mean, I get it. I got two kids, and I'm not going to a show unless I'm playing, you know? So whenever people show up, I'm like, you guys are better than me. And uh, it means a lot, but it's funny because you go around and play honky-tonks and coffee shops and all sorts of things for years and years and years, and then people start putting you on tours where you're playing to people, you know, in small theaters or bigger clubs. And So last year I was going around, and I played this song that was on my last record, and every time I was setting it up, instead of doing a story or something, which I like to do, I would ask a question. I would ask this riddle. And I had one guy once in New York yell at me. He said, be careful when I asked it in New York, which I'm like, why? it's pretty innocent. The riddle is, what does a white Midwestern farmer and a United States combat veteran and a transgendered teenager have in common? I don't see what's controversial about that. <laughs> but I would, I'd go around. I asked that in New York City and you know the guys that I was on tour with they were like are you gonna do that at every show and I was like yeah I'm getting like I'm getting paid a hundred bucks a night either way man I'll, I'll do it and uh, yeah I asked that all around Birmingham Alabama small towns big cities San Francisco red state blue state skinhead blue hair I'd ask them that question and every time I did it you could just kind of feel people like where is he going? I'm about ready to either be like, hell yeah, brother, or I hate this guy. But I'll tell you, the answer to that riddle is people in those groups, farmers, veterans, and anybody in the queer community at large, more than 70% more likely to carry thoughts or follow through suicidal ideation. And I will tell you this, I am but a simple songwriter. All I have to do for math is count to four, occasionally six. And I'm still smart enough to know that 70% is a majority, which is crazy to me because it doesn't add up. If you get on, you know, turn your TV on, you look at any of the news channels, you look at Twitter or any of that stuff, which I try not to. But if you do, they'll tell you we're divided in this nation so much. And I, I just, I just, that doesn't seem to be the case. Because I've been to at least 48 out of the 50. And it's like I said earlier, whatever you think a place is like, you're right. It's just people there, and they're all pretty much the same. And I would ask that question. And I would see a lot of people get uncomfortable. It didn't bother me. Because I already decided I don't care if anybody likes me or not. Hell, my wife hardly likes me most days, so what do I care about somebody in Tuscaloosa? <laughs> but I would ask him, because I read once a quote from Woody Guthrie that said, the job of a folk singer is to comfort those who are disturbed and disturb those who are comfortable. And I thought, man, you know, I don't know what'll happen in a career playing guitar, or writing songs, I, you know, it doesn't matter if there's a claim or this or that or how big the shows get or how many t-shirts you sell or who buys the record because that, the way I think about it is there might be a time in my life when I'm dead and gone and then everybody who ever came out to a show starts to forget that I ever was playing shows. But maybe there's one or two people out there who go, you know, one time I was in, I was in Birmingham, Alabama, and there was this dude playing this little bar. I can't remember what his name was, but 
Man, you know, he played this song for a second. It stopped me in my tracks. And I think, man, if I could do that, one person, maybe two people, what a way to live. What a gift. You know, you can't take things with you when you, uh, when you go. But you can leave them here. And I think that this song would be one of the things I would want to leave. Because if it hurts, it's supposed to. But I've had a lot of people write me and drive hours to come see me play it and say, man, I heard that song and it changed my life. And I'm like, praise God. And it goes like this, because maybe you'll be one of those people. If I'm being honest, I'm going to lie.
shotgun Thank you very much. I got one more song that I'm going to play for you. But I got to tell you, I do appreciate you coming out. I appreciate John and everybody for having us here. You know, it's it's a lot to do one concert, you know, a year at your house where you live with your family. And I think you got, what, four or five going on this week. You know, it's crazy. You know, Logan and I, we spent a good hour of our eight hour drive up here just talking about how much we like you because of the stuff you do man like I, I really do believe you know it's such a great we live in such a great time it's such a great country and it's only great because of people who make it great and you know John is one of those guys and I would suggest that everybody here is one of those people because if you can just slow down and sit in the front yard and drink a beer and listen to some music, man, that's living. That's living. So I'm glad to be here. This is what I'm going to leave you with. It's one of my favorite songs to play. It's one of my favorite songs just in general. And I think that's probably true for a lot of people, judging by how many have played it and put it up on YouTube. But I never let that stop me from giving it my shape. So this is what I'll leave you with. Did my 
my best wasn't much Couldn't see so I tried to touch I told the truth I haven't come here to fool you And even though it all went wrong I'll stand before the Lord of song With nothing on my tongue but hallelujah 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 Maybe there's a God above All I've ever learned from love Was how to shoot somebody Who I drew you It's not a cry that you hear at night And it's not somebody who's seen the light It's a cold, it's a broken Hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 and Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.